Welcome to the exciting world of Blender. Everybody is talking about Blender's non-intuitive user interface. We have been curious, and so we spent some time to work with this software. And in complete contradiction to the expectations we have found, that this program is an amazing tool with very high potential. We will now show you some of the very basic features of Blender. At the end of this tutorial, you will be able to use the object modification tools, and find your way through the program. And you might see that Blender indeed is designed for usage in a very intuitive way. So, after installation, Blender runs out of the box, and upon start, you will see the following window. This is the modeling screen. It is a bit like the Swiss Army knife for Blender workers. It provides a 3D workplace for your objects, and it provides an area with a set of buttons, for context-dependent functions, and settings. There are other screens available. You can find them inside a pull-down box, at the top of this screen. You even can customize your own screen here. Let's go to the material screen for demonstration purposes. This screen contains six sub-windows. When you move the mouse over the screen, sometimes the cursor changes to a double-headed arrow. Every time, when this happens, you are crossing the window border. You can now click the left mouse button, and while holding the button down, drag the window separation line, up, down, left, or right. This behavior is consistent over the whole application, and this consistency is true for almost everything inside Blender. The idea is simple, learn once, and apply everywhere. But let's get back to the modeling screen for now. By the way, this screen contains three sub-windows. One window is almost fully hidden. It contains a whole bunch of system configuration parameters. You do not need to know the full details at this time, but it is good to remember that this window is here. Now, let's do something before we all fall asleep. So what is this square, here in the middle of the window? This is a primitive object. In fact this is a 3D cube. We just look at it from the top. You want to see the other side. No problem, click your middle mouse button and drag the mouse. Immediately your view is rotated according to the mouse moves. This happens until you release the middle mouse button. You can reposition the mouse, click again and drag again. Hence you can look at your object from any viewing angle you like. When you want to go closer, just move your mouse wheel. Or use the plus and minus signs on your number pad to zoom in and out. Let's remove this object now, and then create a new one. So, where do we find the object manipulation functions? Well, you get the most important functions, by hitting the space bar, inside the 3D screen. Immediately a function menu opens, and gives you all you need to proceed. Let's see, where we can find that delete function. Okay, it is in the edit section. Look at the right side of the function menu. The expressions you see there, are keyboard shortcuts. Here you see, that you also can delete the object by pressing, X. So let's use this keyboard shortcut now. But hold on, wouldn't the delete key, be a much better, and more intuitive choice for deleting an object? Well, indeed. You are right. Just press the delete key, and then confirm that you definitely want to erase the object. That works too. Now get back to the function menu, by pressing the space bar again. Enter the add section. Then jump to the mesh section. And there, choose a cube. This new object is not different from what we had before. But now, you know how to create new mesh objects with Blender, and that was worth the effort, wasn't it? Now let's go to edit mode, and modify the object a bit. You can select the modification mode from another pull-up box within the 3D screen. Or just hit the tab key on your keyboard. By the way, almost every function in Blender, can be called either from the keyboard, or by selecting from menu options. Once you get used to it, keyboard shortcuts will make you working much faster. 
but the really amazing thing is that you can use the keyboard and the mouse in parallel. And it is even possible to use the Space Navigator from 3D Connections, which is a fabulous navigation hardware for 3D environments. So look at the object a bit closer now. You see small dots colored in yellow, straight lines also colored in yellow, and some surfaces in a dark pen color. The dots are called vertices, the lines are named edges, and the surfaces are called faces. This is the standard notation in 3D content creation, so remember again. Vertices are points in space, edges are lines in space, and faces are surfaces in space. By the way, in Blender meshes, we only work with square faces and triangle faces. All objects are made out of them. Square faces also are called quads. And triangle faces are named, well, they are just named triangles. Remember that our object is displayed with all edges and vertices colorized in yellow. This means, at the moment the object is fully selected, and so, your now proceeding work will be applied to the entire object. But we only want to select one single point now, so we first have to deselect all vertices. Let us hit the space bar again, then probably we will click on, select. Yes, here we find select and deselect all. Aha, uh -huh, this sounds promising. Let us click here. Now the object is fully deselected. So, how can we select only one single vertex? As always, there are many possible ways to achieve that. We choose a simple approach. Place the cursor near to the vertex which you want to select, then press the right mouse button. There you are! You got your vertex selected. Let us select an additional one. Okay, that works too, but now the first vertex gets deselected. Let us try it again, but let's also press the shift key in parallel. Yes, that was a correct guess. Watch also, how the edges get highlighted in yellow, when two adjacent vertices are selected. Now select a whole quad. And as soon as all four vertices are selected, the quad turns from gray, to dark pink. So far, this behavior meets our expectations. Now an entire side of the cube is selected. So, how can we shift, scale, and rotate, the selected vertices relative to the object? We can look into our function menu again, and search for suitable tools. These tools will probably be located under the transformation tab. But there is a much more intuitive way to go. We can use 3D manipulators. Currently the translate manipulator is active. Just click on one of the arrows and move your vertices along the chosen axis. Click again to stop the translation mode. You also can click at the white circle at the center of the manipulator and move your vertices within the entire plane. What about rotation? Switch to the rotation manipulator and select your rotation axis. Now the vertices will rotate around the weighted vertex center. Move the mouse away from the object while scaling. You will then get more fine control on the rotation angle. Click on the white circle and the rotation plane will be exactly the same as your current viewing plane. And scaling. Just select the scaling manipulator and go ahead and as I said before, learn once, apply everywhere. That's nice. But the object runs a bit out of control now, don't you think? So what can we do? First, we can go and clean up this mess. Guess what? Yes, there is an undo function in our function menu. But, of course, there is also a keyboard shortcut here. Just use Ctrl Z for this. That is familiar, isn't it? Okay, so let's hit Ctrl Z until we are back at the original shape. By the way, of course, there is also a redo, which can be accessed with Ctrl Y. 
A few moments ago, I mentioned that the transformation tools can also be found in the function menu, and again there are keyboard shortcuts available. In short, you can select grab, which is a synonym for shifting or moving the vertices just by pressing G on the keyboard. Then you can scale. In this case, press S. And finally you can select rotate by pressing R. You see that working with the keyboard shortcuts can speed up your work significantly. Now, let's go back to the top view, from where we have seen the object right after starting Blender. So open the view menu. Currently we are in user view mode. That means, we have selected an arbitrary viewing angle. You have the choice to switch to top view, front view, or side view. I select top view. And then try the transformation tools again. Let's move some vertices. As an example we will take the lower left edge of the cube. Just clicking the right mouse key only selects one single vertex. We already have seen this before. Well, after changing the viewing angle a bit, we can select the two vertices by holding the shift key while clicking the right mouse button again. But there is a much better option here. We do have a border select mode in our function menu. As soon as you select this tool, you will see a crosshair cursor. Now move the crosshair to any beginning position. Then click the left mouse button, and while holding the button down, drag the mouse. A rubber band opens up and follows your mouse. As soon as you release the mouse button again, all vertices inside the rubber band get selected. Note that the previously selected vertices do not get deselected here. But the Border Select tool provides another option for you. It also can deselect vertices. So just press B again. Now press and hold down the Alt key and in parallel click the left mouse button, then drag the rubber band around all vertices, which you want to deselect. As soon as you release the mouse button, the vertices inside the rubber band all get deselected. Since Select, Deselect, and Rubber Band Select are so commonly used, they are associated to very prominent keyboard shortcuts, namely A and B. Pressing A, while other vertices are selected, will deselect everything. Pressing A, while nothing else is selected, will select everything. And finally, pressing B opens the Rubber Band tool, or in the Blender notation, the Border Select tool. So I go back to top view, then I press A to deselect all vertices. I press B, then drag the rubber band around the lower left vertices, and... Indeed! They are selected. Now I want to move the vertices. Again press the space bar, and search the move function. Remember, we find this tool under Transform, Grab. Or, as we got a little experience by now, we directly use the keyboard shortcut G and go ahead. Or, as we even got more experienced, just use the transform manipulator. Let's create a simple ramp now. Deselect all vertices by pressing A, then select the upper left vertices by pressing B and use the border select tool. And finally use the transform manipulator to move the vertices around. And at the very end, scale up the lower part of the ramp a bit by deselecting all vertices again. Then select the lower left vertices using the border select tool. Then press S and scale the ramp. Finished. Now it is very important to know that all vertex moves and rotations only take place in the current viewing plane. So, if we look from the top, vertices will be moved in the XY plane. Look at the bottom left corner of the 3D screen. There you see exactly in which plane you are currently operating. If we look from the front, we are working in the XZ plane. 
And finally, when we are looking from the side, we work in the YZ plane. And consequently, when we are looking from an arbitrary view, the tools work again in exactly the corresponding plane. Hence it is very important to select the correct viewing plane before moving and rotating your vertices. It often is desirable to watch from an arbitrary viewing angle, but restrict the position changes to a different plane. Again you simply can use the transform manipulators in that case, by first selecting the whole object by pressing A, and then go ahead. But you can also speed up your work significantly, by using keyboard shortcuts and the mouse in parallel. This can be achieved as follows. You can move the object along the x-axis by pressing G, followed by X. Or, move the object along the y-axis by pressing G, followed by Y. And of course, the same can be done along the z-axis. And last but not least, these rules also apply to rotation and scaling. You think, that's enough for now? Let me tell you a last goodie, before we quit this tutorial. Try this. Click somewhere into the 3D screen. While holding the mouse button, drag the mouse along a straight line. Then release the mouse button again. Now the object follows the mouse on the viewing plane. This is just another way to move the object. Another left click will stop the transformation. Now left click, and then move the mouse along a circular path. Then release the mouse button. Now you're in rotation mode. And again, the next left click, will stop the transformation. Left click again, and move the mouse forwards and backwards along a straight line. Then release the mouse button. Now you're in scaling mode. Left click to stop the transformation again. Until here, we have covered the most basic functions of Blender. Of course, there is so much more to say, but I think, we should take a break now, and maybe watch the tutorial a second time, or simply start doing a lot of practicing in Blender. If you want to know more about the usage of Blender, we invite you, to watch our subsequent tutorials. Have a nice day!